nothing better than practice for that. Okay, so real quick, let's let's just run through these as fast as we can. And just shout out helpful hints on what to do first, and next, and next, and next. Yana. Uh, first you would subtract three x from three x, and then three x from seven x. Okay, so we get zero x, we get five on the side, we get seven x minus two x is four x minus four. And next, Jax? Minus four on each side. <laughs> minus four? Plus four. Oh, plus four. Yeah. Okay, agree. Yeah. Plus four. Yeah. All right. Nine equals four x. Divide by four, divide by four, and x equals nine fourths. Four, so we're at, what would that be? 2.25. Question? So far, you wouldn't actually have to divide 9 by 4. You could just put 9 over 4. I love a fraction. So yeah, 9 fourths is good. If you want to write it as 2 and a fourth or 2.25, it's correct. The only thing that I warn you against is if you get an answer like 1 third, either tell me it's 1 third, or when you write it as a decimal, should you write 0.3? No. 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 1 third and 0.3 are not the same. This is 3 tenths. This is 1 third. They're close, but they're not the same. How do I make this decimal correct? 1.3. No, this is less than 1. 1.3 would be more than 1. 0. 0.03? No, it does start with 0. 0.3. It's 0. But it's 1.3. No. What's the, what's the decimal three. version of 1 third? You should know it. Point. It's point three 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 three. Oh, okay. Maybe line. Yeah, oh, either a line over that. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. Now uh, point three would be incorrect when you lose credit. All right. So go first one. Somebody's suggestion, at least for what to do first, even if you're not only finished. Yeah, Emma. Times 2 by x and then times 3. So we are, what's that called? Distributing. Distributing, very good. We distribute into 2. Mm -hmm. Now? Really? Add 6 and 2. Add 6 okay. and 2. My like terms. Perfect. Okay? Yeah, Robert? Did you subtract 2x? That's what I would do. Not the only thing to do, but certainly a good way to go. Brandon? Minus 8. Minus 8. Minus 8. 8 minus 8 is 0, so we just have 2x over here, and 8 minus 8 is 0, so 2x is equal to 0. Divide by 2 on both sides, and you will quickly find out that x has to be zero. You know that sometimes some number has to be zero. The only number you can multiply and get zero huh. is zero. So x equals zero. Okay. Give you a minute just to get a little bit ahead. Okay, what shall we do first here? Robert. Would you minus 2x on this side? Sure, minus 2x. Okay, so I'll subtract 2x. Or subtract 2x from the negative 3x. So 7x minus 5 minus 5x. Right? Negative 3x minus 2x. Remember when you have mm -hmm. negatives and x's, just think of it as an, on, on a number line to help you uh, arrive at the correct number of x's. So if we're at negative 3x, and we subtract two more x's, here we are at negative 5x. Um, equals, no, that's all gone, so just equals 5. Anybody besides Robert got an idea? I like Robert and all, but uh, anybody? I did mine differently. Okay, don't subtract on those sides. Subtract 5 on both sides. Okay, subtract 5, subtract 5. That's negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. Don't you add 5? Yeah. And that equals 0. I see this from a few 
where we get a lot, all the stuff over here, and zero over here. Now, it's not wrong, but so you add five instead. OK, so if we add five instead, let's see what happens instead of that. Add five and add five. Now we'll cancel this negative five and wind up with 10 on this. I like that. Emma? 7x minus 5x. Combining like terms, we get 2x. I know. Oh. Tell me the answer. Tell me what we're going to do right now. I'm going to tell you what to do. Oh, wait. Okay, Katie's going to tell us what to do. Okay. You divide by 2 on both sides. Great. This divided by 2 is 1x. This divided by 2 is 5. So Which you can see, of course, it has to be 5, right? Okay. Good. So we're solving equations with variables on both sides. Now we're solving equations with multiple variables. I tell you which variable I want you to get by itself. You get that variable by itself. It's no different than all the variables or the equations we've just solved. It's just that uh, well, one of those, one of those, or many of those things that are going to be floating around, be subtracted from both sides, divided, and have variables in it. So we're going to solve for x. Here's a 3x plus something equals 12. We've had this situation so many times. 3x plus something equals something, right? JC? You subtract 6w from both right? Subtract the thing that's being added to the thing. You want to get by itself. 3x equals well, just 12 minus 6w. There's no way to combine these. They're not like terms. Jackson? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. How many times have you subtracted something from both sides and then divided? Not a lot of times. Right? Two most common steps, right? We get down to that point. Okay. Good. Oh, um. You got no, an answer or a question? I had a question. Question. Um, so on the quest, uh -huh. is this kind of stuff, and then like what else is going to be on it? All the stuff we've been doing so far today. Okay. And more. Graphs and stuff. Robert? So x equals whatever 12 minus 6w divided by 3 is. Yes. And also, we can take 12 and divide it by 3 and get 4. And take negative 6w divided by 3 and get negative 2w. <coughs> and divide each of those things to separate by addition or subtraction by the denominator. Can you just write what you yeah, mean? This is fine. Yeah. Okay. But this is no. where we need to be going. OK? We can get to that point at some point in the near future. This is fine. And this is fine. Did you, you mean, did you mean something different? No. Did I answer your question? No. Okay. Uh, all right. Next, we're gonna talk about some graphing. Okay. So it's helpful to think of these things as a story. We can think of this as a story like um, I earn three dollars per hour. Remember that rate. That thing is multiplied by x. Think of it as a rate, all right? Uh, plus two, what does that plus two mean in this scenario if I have three dollars an hour I'm earning? You should uh, yeah, it is. You get at, someone gives you two dollars. Just two dollars. Two dollars every tip. Yeah. yeah. Well, not every anything. It just is two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars for a tip. For a tip, okay? You just get two dollars. So it's like we start with two dollars. <laughs> If you were going to add up your money, you just started at two dollars, right? And then you started adding on three dollars for every hour. Okay. So our graph should look like that. It starts off with two dollars, right? Because really, that's what you get if you plug in what for zero for for x. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Kind of gave it away there. Zero. If I plug in zero, I work zero hours. I still have two dollars. Okay. But in one hour, what's going to happen? You get five dollars. You're going to go up three for a total of $5. And one more hour later? Go up three more. So you see this. To the right, this much, and up, this much. That's called using slope-intercept form. There we, well, why is it called slope-intercept form? We've got two words, slope and intercept. And there's a line going to the y. Okay, so that's the intercept part, right? The y-intercept is 2. And the other part of it? It tells you right there how much it goes over and how much it goes up. Go over, then up, over, then up, over, then up. However much it tells you. Okay. And you can see why it works that way, because it's like a rate, right? You can think of it in your 
mind when you think of it as a story, as a, as a rate that actually applies to your life, like dollars per hour or uh, hundreds per second, dollars per day, pounds per week. Well, in this scenario, we don't really take into account of breaks. We just take into account how many hours are worked. If there's a break in between those hours, it doesn't really matter. We're just totaling up all the hours. Okay? Now, if you're having, I guess this is a, a strategy. If you're having any trouble understanding the slope intercept form, I mean, you can't just not understand it forever. Okay? But if you need a place to fall back on, always fall back on plugging in numbers for x. If you're not sure what to do, plug in numbers for x. Okay? But in your plugging in numbers for x, you're really just going to be following the slope intercept form. Let me show you what I mean. The first number you would always plug in for x would be what? Zero. Yeah. Okay? This is the intercept part of the slope intercept. Okay? I plug in zero, what am I going to get for y? Three. We've done it so many times, it's just like second nature to see what we're going to get when we plug in zero for x. We're just going to get this guy here that doesn't get multiplied to zero when you plug zero in for x. So if I'm using slope intercept form as opposed to always plugging in something for x, I kind of just do that stuff in my head. Plug in zero, I get a three. Y intercept is three. Then, uh, if we were falling back on just plugging in things for x, you remember what we'd plug in for x that would make our life pretty easy right now? Somebody besides these two guys? Lily? Seven. Seven. I love to plug in seven in this situation. Why? <coughs> it cancels out. It can Cancels out the seven in the denominator. Now remember, what I'm about to write in this parentheses is what? The number seven, right? And that's the number I'm plugging in for x, right? Seven over one. I'm plugging that in for x, so x is seven right now. I'm plugging in seven. I'm going over to an x of seven on the graph. Well, that's what I'm going to do when I go to graph this point. When I plug in. 7, well, all that happens is 7 eliminates the 7. I get 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay? So I went over 7. Remember, I started at 3. I went over 7 here. Went over 7. And then I just went up another 5, right? Over this much and up this much. Went over to 7, and I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I added 5 to this 3, and I'm at 8 now. And when we're graphing lines, two points are all we need. So if you need to plug in numbers for x, absolutely do that. Okay? If that helps you to not make mistakes, if it helps you to find two correct points, absolutely plug in numbers <coughs> for x. But there is a faster way. Faster is not always better. Okay? If you don't understand that this is where we started our graphing careers, then you should stay here until you never forget that this graph is made by, really, in reality, plugging in numbers for x. But this pattern of the y-intercept and then following the slope over and up is just a nice, quick little thing. What's that? Oh, it's still nothing. No. Uh, <coughs> so let me quickly remind you like, a, of a story that we've used many times where a container starts with water in it, starts with water at three inches, right? And every seven what? Seven. Seconds, what happens? Up five inches. Five inches and it goes up, okay? So that's, to me, that helps me remember seven is the horizontal, and five is the vertical. Seven seconds, we add on five inches. Okay, here, if you start out, with a negative one, if I run zero in, I'd get negative one. Is everyone all right? Okay. We start out with negative one. Uh, kind of hard to think about what that would mean in a container. The container starts out one inch below the surface of the ground or something like that. But every four, let, let's say like this, uh, I don't know, it was this class or the other class, 
We made up a story about a plant. I like that story a lot. That's a good story. Because we we start out one inch below the earth with our seed. Okay. Yeah, we just dug a hole into the ground. One inch. That's why it's negative, right? Negative. And then every four, let's say every four days, four, let's make it weeks. You put more dirt into the hole. You grow one inch. The plant grows one inch. No, three inch. inches? Three inches, not one inch. Three inches. Every four weeks it grows three inches. Okay, that sounds believable. So four weeks later, one, two, three, four weeks later, it grows one, two, three inches, and now it is two inches tall, because one of those inches was underground. Now it's made its way two inches above the ground. And what's gonna happen four weeks later? One, two, three, four weeks later. I go up and I go up three more. Another three, two, three, one, Five. two, three inches. And we can just keep doing that, but I'm just we're just gonna keep making points in a straight line. So let's go ahead and draw that straight line. There we go. Just two for the plus six. Okay, we start out with six. And if you just want to think of it as uh, seconds and inches, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Every five seconds, what happens? Mm -hmm. Every five seconds. It goes up two. It goes up two. Okay. This applies to every graph, just like every five x's, we go up two y's. Every five x's, we go up two y's. Now we see a negative in front of there. What's our graph going to look like? What's going to be the main difference between this graph and the last three it's going graphs? Down. down. As we go from left to right, it's going to go down. We're losing something. If this were a container of water, there'd be a hole. There's a hole in it. That's why there's water coming out and the level is going down. Right? Starting out at two inches. What happens after that? If we start out at two inches, then every what? Then what happens? It goes over five. It goes over down. Analogy. We're digging a hole. Uh, yeah, we could dig a hole, so we could go into the negatives. This, this pile could start out at two uh, inches. inches tall. This, there's a pile of dirt, it's two inches tall. And we start digging, and uh, as we dig, every what, every what, what happens? Every seven seconds, what happens? Four inches. Four inches. You dig four inches into the ground, you go down. One, two, three, four inches now, after seven seconds. You get another two four inches, inches into the you know, below the actual ground. We've gotten rid of this two inches of uh, stuff on top, <coughs> and now we are a total of two inches below the ground. And now you two. reach the treasure chest. Not quite yet. I think maybe we have to dig a little deeper. So we dig another seven <laughs> seconds, and what happens then? We have four, 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 four more inches. Right? Seven more seconds, which I don't have enough room to show you. Uh, representing where we are in the earth at any given time. Right? We're still digging straight down, even though the graph is slanted. The graph doesn't represent which way we're digging in the ground, it just represents how far fast, we are. Right? how far we are. If, we, if it's slanted, the slantiness is just kind of a reflection of how fast we are going down into the ground. Right? The slope represents the rate, and the steeper the line, the faster you're doing what you're doing. So it looks like when we have a negative rate, we are losing whatever y represents, every whatever x represents. So x represents time in our imagination, and y represents the, the depth into the earth. Okay. In that scenario. 
Here again, we have a negative rate. We're going down. We're losing whatever it is. We're losing altitude, we're losing inches of water, we're losing money, whatever. Okay. We start out with how much? Negative. We start out with negative two. And every five seconds you go down three. Five seconds you go down three. Whatever that three represents. Three inches, two dollars, whatever. By one, two, three, we go down. Right? We go over one, two, three, four, five. And we go down. One, two, three. And if you are still plugging in numbers for X, you're really just you're proving the point here. If you put in zero and no time has gone by, we started at negative two. Then you want to plug in five for x. Five is x, right? X is horizontal, so we go over to five, but positive five. Right. When we do that, that was five seconds. So now we're looking at negative three, negative three, minus two. We start with our negative two, and we subtract three. We're down at negative five. So again, if you're not sure how to do this slope intercept stuff, keep working at it, keep practicing, ask me for practice problems, I will give them to you, ask me to sit down with you and help you, I will do so, whatever you want, okay? Uh, but keep plugging in numbers for x. Not sure. Are you passing out a review mm -hmm. for us? I am. I have a review packet for you. I believe that's the last one I had for you. I just wanted to give you a bit of practice on the graphing. Like I said, it's been getting better, but it needs to get even better. And some of you are making mistakes. Just go back to plugging in numbers for x. If you feel like you're finally catching on after plugging in numbers for x a bunch, then shift over to y-intercept and slope. Okay?